Good evening, family. Tony here once again. Today's Thursday, August 22nd, 2024. This is a special video I'm making tonight, guys, um, because of a co-worker who needs to be lifted up in prayer. It's very, very important. I do have something else I want to talk about, too, um, about a dream that I had a few years ago, no, quite a few years ago, that I think is uh, relative now, and I'll explain why. But um, if you haven't come to Lord Jesus Christ, now's the time. Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4, that Jesus died and was buried and raised on the third day. That's the gospel. That's what saves you, believing in that, believing that um, um, Jesus is the Son of God. Put your faith and trust in him and what he did on the cross and his finished work. That is how you get saved. Uh, you want to do it right away. You don't want to waste any time because time is very short. I believe Jesus is coming back any time. I certainly believe he's coming back this year. And, um, I mean, we could be moments away with everything that's happening in the world. So you want to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You're saved by faith. Um, through You're saved by grace through faith, not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, lest any man should boast. You do not want to put your, you know, try to put your faith in yourself or in the things that you do for your salvation. Rather, put your faith and trust in Christ so that you can receive the Holy Spirit. Because the moment that you accept Christ you will receive the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will help you in your life. It will help you and lead you to good works, to do right. It will help you to, you know, it will help you in every possible way. That is, Jesus even referred to the Holy Spirit as the helper. He is um, the one who will, you know, speak to you, you know, and, and, and guide you as a Christian. Because um, we're all sinners and we all sin. But, um, you need the Holy Spirit to help you, especially nowadays when the temptation is so strong and it's everywhere. It's very important that you get saved now because there's a time coming very soon called the tribulation period where you won't have that the opportunity to for the rapture for one thing where Jesus is going to come back and, and, and take his bride out of this earth before the tribulation is. You won't have that anymore and you will have to go through the worst time the world's ever seen, not to mention you'll most likely be martyred for your faith so if you get saved now you can avoid that so do it today and don't waste any time and um guys um i just there's a i have a co-worker named eddie i um, mean he's 36 years old he has a debilitating spinal disease that will probably ultimately lead to him being either not able to walk or paralyzed altogether um so I just ask that you pray for him for that. But also, he's, if I didn't mention, he's 36. He had a two-year-old died about a year and a half ago. He had a fever. He was, I think he was born with multiple sclerosis, if I remember the story correctly. I'm not sure exactly what caused the fever, but he had a high fever, so they took him to the hospital. They kept him in the waiting room for like eight hours and treated him, sent him home. And then um, in the morning, they had found him. He had, he had passed away. And guys, the worst thing that can happen to a parent is to lose a child. Um, Eddie's saved. Um, he's born again. And um, and I, I spoke with him today, and I said, you're going to see him again probably a lot sooner than you realize. And uh, I just, guys, just lift, he just needs to be lifted up in prayers. Um, he just just needs, um, he just needs some encouragement because, um, I mean, that time is right around the corner, and he had to go to the hospital. He, he was having mental breakdowns. I mean, even to an, even a year and a half later, you know, losing a child is something I just don't know if I could even deal with. I, I, I just, I mean, if it weren't for, you know, Christ and the Holy Spirit, I, I know there's no way I would be able to deal with it. But knowing that I would see them again would be the only thing that would get me through this. And um, Eddie's definitely going to see his little boy again. Now, he said when he passed, he wasn't talking um, yet. And I told him, I says, well, he's likely going to be a little bit older when you see him, and he'll probably have a lot to say. So be prepared. Um, I know a lot of people don't understand or believe in the rapture. They don't, they don't really read the Bible. They don't really understand where it comes from. They think it's made up. They think that that was a, a Darby teaching, that it was made up. But the, the, the Bible is very, very plain about it, very clear about it. A snatching away. Um, Paul talks in Thessalonians about it. Um, it's mentioned in shadow and type all throughout the Bible. Um, it's mentioned in Revelation where Jesus talks about an escape for the Church of Philadelphia. Um, but the word rapture is not in the Bible. Um, but caught up 
in Greek, where Paul says, he says that um, we, will, we, we will not all sleep, but we'll all be changed. But he also says that the dead in Christ would rise first, and those alive and remaining would be caught up to meet with him in the air of them and Jesus in the air and would always be with Jesus. That word caught up in, in, he, in, in Greek, <clears throat> it means harpazo. The word harpazo means to be snatched up, to be taken by force as, you know, to take into oneself as in to pull someone out of harm's way. It'd be like snatching a child out of a fast moving car. Um, that's what the, the harpazo is. That's what the rapture is. And that's why it fits so perfectly with the uh, with Revelation 12, because it's talking about a, a child being born and called up to heaven. The same word, because the devil is waiting to devour the child. So that's another reason I believe that when this war in heaven ends and the devil is finally kicked out of heaven for good, he can't go back anymore. Because right now, and his angels are all able to go once a year, it's in the book of Job, to petition God for the things they need. But when this war happens after this war the devil and his angels will be cast to earth they will no longer be able to go to heaven to petition god and this will be basically the devil's last stance but what it also is is god's wrath on mankind who rejected christ and who wanted the devil though they're going to get him now for seven years so it's going to be a really bad time but jesus not only died for us but he promised his disciples that he would come back for us one day I mean, he was, he was died and was raised. And he also told his disciples that one day he would return to get them. And that's what the rapture is. That is the, the, the snatching away. Okay. Now there'll probably be another one at the end of the tribulation, but there is one before. Um, we're not subject to God's wrath. The Bible is clear about it. That, that um, those that believe in Christ are not subject to God's wrath. Um, the whole tribulation is God's wrath, but there'll be saints, the, what they call the tribulation saints, who will accept Christ during the tribulation and who will, um, you know, be saved. But they're, they're not going to be under God's wrath, but they will fall under the um, wrath of the devil because... They didn't accept Christ before the tribulation because they love not the truth. they be the world's going to be under a delusion. And so basically everybody's going to be out to get the Christians during the tribulation days. Anyone who confesses Christ during that time will be sought after to be killed. Um, the, the thing I wanted to talk about was I'm seeing a lot of videos about people who are having visions or dreaming about tsunamis. And I talked about this um, dream years ago, but I had dreamed that I was at the beach with my um, my wife and my son and my daughter, my youngest too. And um, we were in a hotel and we were walking down the corridor of the hotel like we're, the, like we're going to a room or something. And out the windows, big, there was big plate glass windows. And you could see the, the beach, you could see the ocean. And uh, we were walking straight ahead and the window would be to our right. So the ocean would be out to our right. And I, I, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye walking. It's a very vivid dream. Living color, it was really very vivid and realistic. It was like it was really happening. And I saw something come flooding up on the, like, down below, um, on the, the concrete down below um, the, the hotel. It was the parking lot or a walkway or something down there or maybe where people sit. I think I remember seeing some little tables were set up or whatever. But I saw water come rushing up. And just then I looked up before I even had a chance to think a wave. We were like six stories up. We were way up in that thing. I mean, we, I was looking way down and the wave just busted through the window and instantly we were all underwater. And I was trying in the darkness, trying to find reaching, trying to find my wife and my kids. And then I woke up and um, I believed that that was a, a, a warning that there's going to be a tsunami. But, you know, we go to the beach. We used to anyways. We don't really go much anymore. We used to go um, about every year, and um, I figured that maybe this is something that's going to happen when we're at the beach one year. So the year that I went to the beach and I filmed it, you know, the beach, if you look in my videos, uh, they're all still there. There was one about uh, Myrtle Beach, and that was the one that, you know, I talked, you know, I, I did some videos while I was there, you know, the moon. I think it was a new moon and all that. Um, Might have been Rosh Hashanah. I can't remember. Somewhere close to it. And so um, I figured that maybe this tsunami was going to happen one year while we were at the beach. 
But now the kids are all grown. Leah turned 18 this year, so she's grown now too. So what I was thinking about, and I happened to run across Perry Stone's video today about, he was talking about having a tsunami, having tsunami dreams quite often, and a lot of other people. And I, I saw that, and I got to thinking about my tsunami dream, and something came to my mind. You know, a lot of my dreams and my one vision all seem to be like, have, have timelines. They're like time stamps. And, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like, um, like something in the dream or the vision points to some specific time frame, if that makes sense. And it occurred to me that we always go to the beach right around Labor Day. Um, we, we, that's just the best time. We feel like it's the best time to go is right at the end of the, of the busy season, right when things are changing over. Um, so if you go down on Labor Day, the very next day after Labor Day, all the rates drop and everything. So we'd always go down and try to like spend a couple days before and a couple days after Labor Day. Then, um, but I wonder, I wonder, this is just the, the theory. I wonder if that dream uh, could have represented since I was, we were there, since in the dream we were at the beach. I wonder if it could have been a timeline, not necessarily pointing at a time when we would be at the beach, but at a time that we would have been at the beach if we were still going at our normal time, sometime around, you know, early September, you know, sometime around Labor Day. It's just a thought, guys. I mean, with everything that's going on, it certainly wouldn't be no surprise. Um, I mean, we're still looking at, um, right now we're still in that area of the, of the feast of wine. You know, I know it's past and all, but, but we're in that time frame. you know, where new wine would be, you know, made and, you know, the end of the harvest season coming up and, you know, there's, there's just of, of the wheat and all that. And so there's just a lot of, um, there's a lot of symbologies in the Bible pointing to the time, a harvest time, you know, and a time of around the, uh, the Feast of Trumpets time. Now, Feast of Trumpets is actually in October this year, so it's a little bit further out. But still, September is, you know, it's the first month of fall. It's the first month of autumn. You know, I think it's the 21st or 22nd. I'm not sure, but, um, you know, that's or sometime in, sometime in September anyway is, the, is when autumn begins. It's the uh, fall equinox, so. So maybe there's something to that. Maybe there's something, if this be the, you know, the terminal year, if this is the year because of all the things that's happened in Israel, that, that things are, come, are, are you know, coming to fruition, then maybe sometime in early September, we can be looking towards some something happening. Maybe the rapture. The rapture could happen any time. So it certainly could happen. I mean, there's really not a whole lot that has to happen before it. The only thing that I think we may see before we go, we may not see it. But the only thing that I think would that we would probably that would probably happen either you know right before or right after the rapture would be the devil being kicked out of heaven, you know, at the end of the war in heaven. So I mean, it's possible that while he's coming down, we're going up. It seems that to say that in in Revelation, it seems to imply that anyways. It doesn't exactly say that, but it seems to imply it. So, um, but then again, being that. You know, the devil and his angels could come down and we may not even know it. So, you know, you, we may or may not. So um, that may not be something that we would see. So it still could happen any time. Um, I think that um, we're closer than we've ever been. I mean, not just because of the time, for, because it's further along in time, but because of the things that are happening in Israel, because of all the, the earthquakes, the wars, the rumors of wars, the volcanoes, the natural disasters, the threats of all these things looming. They said this is going to be the worst hurricane year on record. Uh, talking about how the oceans are warmer, warming up and causing these me uh, mega storms to, to form, you know. I mean, we're early in the season. We already started having you know, hurricanes really early this year. And so, um, of course, this is a crazy year. Um, I mean, we'll see. We'll see, guys. But uh, if, you, if you could, please lift, uh, lift up Eddie in, in your prayers. Um, he needs all the prayers he can get. Guys, he's a wreck. Um, I can't imagine what, what, that, what it would be like. I, and I know that you never get over losing someone you love, especially a child, I'm sure. But um, it helps to, to, to know that you're going to see him again. And, and um, guys, I'm sure I told Eddie I was going to make this video. And um, I, I got permission to say his name. And um, he's going to be watching this, so if you, you know, put put some comments in for him, so that you know we can lift him up and encourage him in prayer. And I love you guys so much. And I just want to thank you all, all my subscribers. You know, I don't I don't say it very often, but, but I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers who have been with me for years. Um, I, I see you in the comments. I talk to you all the time, and um, I just you know really appreciate 
that you actually come here and listen to me. Um, the Lord has blessed me with this channel, and um, I hope that I've been an encouragement. You know, I, I don't know if anyone's gotten saved, but maybe one or two that I know of since I've done this channel. I hope that some have. Um, it would all be worth it if, if one person came to Christ, everything. My whole life would be meaningful if, if, if I could help lead one person to Christ. Of course, we can't save anyone, but we can certainly plant the seed and we can certainly, you know, you know, try to lead them to Jesus. You know, kind of like um, Tyler with Generation 2434 always says, he says, I'm like a beggar. He says, and I'm just showing other beggars where to find bread. That's it. You know, there's nothing special about me. I'm not a preacher, pastor, anything like that. I'm just a, a, a brother in Christ, a born again believer who is watching for the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And on that note, guys, I'll either see you here or there, especially in the air. So says Brother Chooch, and, or I'll see you on the next video, or I'll see you in heaven. Bye, guys.